So today we're going to do a tutorial on how to use MathCAD as a means to do uncertainty analysis similar to what we did with Excel. And I'm going to use around the same values for the uncertainty. Again, these values that I'm using for like the base, the height, and like gauge factor uncertainty, you got to figure that out on your own. But the DAC uncertainties, I'll be using the ones that we're using the handout. So first things first is well, MathCAD allows you to visually program equations in like Excel except you don't have to reference cells you can reference arrays or certain specific values and you can directly create those values in a little worksheet. Now before we start with MathCAD I'm going to create a little text file that I can import to MathCAD that has the data about my mass, my um, lengths, my strain values so that I don't have to worry about that as well as Young's modulus. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to go into Excel and then I'm going to just create a list of stuff. And the list of stuff I'm going to input is the information for my result. All right. So my first column is going to be LS. So I'm just going to put in the nine different values for LS and I'm going to put it in meters for LS. Then in mass, I'm going to put in kilogram. Now I'm going to put in my masses in kilograms. Now I'm going to start inserting my strains. Now if you already have this in Excel, then you can just create this text file in a similar fashion by opening a blank Excel and just copy and pasting these values. And I'm going to insert my Young's modulus and gigapascal. Now once you've inserted all your data, and what you do is you're going to go ahead and file, save as, and I'm going to call it, let's see, I'm just going to name, I'm going to save it as a text tab delimited, and I'm just going to call it um, lab for data, and it's going to be a TS TXT file, and I'll save it on my desktop. And then you just hit OK to that first one, then you hit yes, and then you just close out and hit don't save, and you can see that a text file was created on the desktop. So now that I have my text file of data, I'm going to open MathCAD. And now, this is what MathCAD looks like when you open it. Now I should say there's different menus here, and the menus that correspond to everything, you can, you can look into that more so with uh, MathCAD itself. But to show them, you go to View, Toolbars, and then the menus themselves. Alright, so this is what MathCAD looks like. It kind of is like a, looks like a note taker in a sense. And when you start typing in, um, it refers to math related functions and it'll show a blue cursor. And you can define something using the, like a, you type a variable, hit the equal sign and type a value, it'll automatically define it. Or you type in such as like V, say I want to make capital V some value, then shift colon 9.81 or whatever you want to call it. Now if I try and reference V above here, it will not give you the proper value. Now if I reference it on the same line as where I just where I just defined it, it will give you that value returned. If I reference it below, it will give you the value. So when you define a variable, it has to be to the right of it or below it in order to use that variable. If you're trying to define it later on and you're using it to the top and to the right of it, it will not work. So anything above the line that you inserted in, so I have the X right here, anything along the same line as it will be defined, anything above it won't be defined, and anything below it will be. So I can also redefine X using the X, then shift, double colon, the button next to the right of L on your keyboard as 6, and you'll notice that below it, it's equal to 6, but above it, it's equal to 1. So here it redefines x and writes over that variable past this point. So keep in mind that anything above where you define a variable and you try and use it above it won't work and anything you define below will work. And then if you redefine the value below, anything after that redefinition will be that new value. Anything above will be the old value. Now the great thing about MathCAD is, is that you can start typing text and it will change it from a math type to a text type. So I can say defining the DAQ settings or um, defining the, yeah, just say DAQ settings. 
and you notice that it changed from blue to a red column, which means it's just text. So the way you can define variables is you just start typing V. Now if you want to define a math function, do not hit the space bar, otherwise it'll change it to text like it just did. So keep it in the blue. You want to see this blue cursor in order for it to work. Now I'm going to define V dot ex when you press the period button it makes a subscript and then I'm going to define that as I'm going to define it as 5 because that's what it was in the lab and you can either hit the equal sign initially because MathCat already knows you're trying to find it or you can hit the shift colon button 5 then I'm going to define the bit as 24 then we need to know VI, and for me, VI was defined as 1.6 millivolts, so times 10 to the minus 3. When it's on the blue cursor, you see I'm at the 3. If I hit the space bar, I'll select the minus and the 3, and then the 10, and then the 1.6. So as you keep on hitting the space bar, I'll select almost everything, so you can delete or edit it without having to do very much. Now I'm going to define the range of voltage, and that's equal to the V excitation times... 25 minus a negative V dot excitation times 25 and this is in millivolts so I'm gonna use my blue cursor to select all of it times 10 to the third to the minus 3 and then when I hit equals it'll tell me the value to the right which is 250 millivolts so now I have all the general information about the DAX inserted. I need to import my data so that I can start calculating V0. And to import data in, the, in MathCAD, there's two ways to do it. You can go to Insert, Data, from Input, File Input, and then you can just browse to where your, your data is at. So I can just browse to my desktop, select Math, math uh, Lab 4 Data, hit Finish. And then I define the variable that I'm gonna that I want to import it to. So I'm gonna just call it data. And then what you can do is it'll import that data for you. And then you just say data equals, and you can see that it's a matrix. It imports it as a matrix where this first column is ls, second column is m, third column strain, fourth column is Young's modulus. Now the way that MathCAD uh, does indexing by default, the first column is zero. 1, 2, 3, and then the rows. Same thing, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, instead of 1 to 9. So keep that in mind. So that's the first way you can import data. The second way you can import data is I can say data is defined as read, print, read PRN, parenthesis, quotation, and then I can say lab for data dot txt in quotation and then if I hit enter it will give me an error because I need to close the parentheses for this function now now it's giving me an error because it doesn't know where the file is so if I save this file this mathcad file on the desktop where everything else is so say like lab 4 uncertainty now it will read the lab view data because you're using it in the same directory if I didn't save it in the desktop if I didn't save MathCAD in the desktop then I would have to put in the full file path which would be like C capital C colon slash user slash I'm in the whatever account you're in slash desktop slash lab4. Open your file navigator, go to my computer, OS, users, and the user. So the reason why it's not working here is because I said you users is what I need to put. And now you can see it is working. So you can do it two ways. You can save the file in the same directory and just reference that file name or absolute directory. Now if you're opening a new MathCAD file and haven't saved it in the same directory, then you're going to have to do the absolute location like I'm doing here. Now when you import your data, I'm going to make a little note above it, a text note, to give me a comment about what it's doing. So I'm saying, um, let's say, importing data from LabVIEW to calculate uncertainty. 
So that's the way you can import data. Now, if you don't want to import data, then what you can do is you can create a matrix for each of those. But the easiest way is to import it. I'm going to find each of those columns in my data input. So if I, if I, if I hit data equals, what I want to do now is I want to separate them into ls, mass, young, strain, Young's modulus. To do that, what you do is make the variable you want. So let's say I'm doing L dot S and I'm defining that as data. And then you're going to open your matrix toolbar. And you see here it says matrix column, the shortcut control six. You're going to go ahead and insert that. And I want column zero for LS. And now if I hit L dot S equals, you can see it just took that first column of data. Now I'm going to do mass the same way. I can just copy this portion here by highlighting Control C, Control V, saying one. And then I'm going to do strain. I'm going to go to Greek toolbar. If you don't have it open, you go to View Toolbars and then Greek. And I'm going to say epsilon is defined as data to the second column. And then finally, Young's modulus E. I'm going to say is data to the third. And you can see that if I do E equals, you can see I'm a little bit above it, so it doesn't work. And I put four instead of three, so I want a three. Now if I move this down here, I delete the equal sign and say equals, you see that it takes it and shows it. So this is showing that when you move it up here, it's not defined. When I move it down here, it is, because it's below it. Now that I've imported my data, I can calculate my V0. So now I'm going to say calculating V0. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to define an array of I values for the indexes. So what you have to do here is since this is a matrix, I got a reference to each individual row to calculate the V0. And it starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to create an array of values of index I, which I'm going to call a, a matrix I. And that's going to have the number 0, 1 through 8. So i is defined as 0, comma 1. So that's telling it to go in steps of 1. Then if you hit the colon button without shift, the button next to L, to the right, to the right of L on the keyboard, 8. And then if I hit i equals, it's an array of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's a way I can access the matrix itself by making this a subscript or an array subscript in LabVIEW in MathCAD. Instead of a text subscript like here, I'm going to make it an array subscript. And what it will do is it will calculate for each value. To do an array index, you have to use the button to the right of the P button on the keyboard. It's that actual bracket. Now the parenthesis, the bracket facing right without hitting shift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type V.0 array, the bracket to the right, the one right to the right of P, the P button on the keyboard, I, and what this is going to say is I want to calculate V0 for this index 0, 1 to 8. I want to make a matrix basically. Defined as gauge factor, which I forgot to um, reference up here, and I'll go ahead and do that right now. So gauge factor is defined as 2.05 times V dot EX times epsilon array i, so the right bracket, divided by 4 plus v dot i. And now what this is doing is this array i is telling it to calculate, OK, v0 of 0 is equal to gauge factor times vex times epsilon 0 index divided by 4. And epsilon 0 is this first value. Now do v0 1, the second, row, the second value of this, is equal to gauge factor times vex times epsilon 2 and so on and so forth. And so if I type v.0 equals, you'll see that I calculated the v out based on that. So now that we have that, we can finally start calculating the uncertain calculating uncertainty of DAQ. So now the first thing we're going to calculate is error due to resolution, which is u.0. And that's defined as we already defined the range up here. And we already defined the bits up there. So it's the range divided by 2 to the bit minus 1 
all divided by 2, right? Because the resolution divided by 2 is uncertainty. And if I hit equals, you'll get the uncertainty for that. Now, I don't want to display it, so I'm just going to define it there. The next one I'm going to define is u dot c z e or u c of 0 error from the handout for this lab, which is 0 0.05 divided by 100 times the range, voltage range. So I have those two defined. Now I need to find the uncertainty of C due to SE. So I'm going to have uncertainty due to C, SE, for VI. And that's defined as 0 0.2 divided by 100, 0.2% of the reading. So 0 0.2 divided by 100 times V dot I itself. Now I need to calculate the USE for V out. So U dot CSE underscore V0 defined as, but bef before I do that, since V0 is many different values, I got to do the array I so I can calculate it for every value like I did above, is defined as 0 0.2 divided by 100 times V dot 0 array I. And then you notice that when I do U dot CSE underscore V0 equals, it'll do each value. So this one equation is actually the equivalent of doing nine equations. Instead of having i, you would have array 1 or array 0, but you'd have to do that every single time. So now using this array i, it lets you to do all nine values at once using that. So again, when I use this i subscript, it's basically taking the matrix and breaking it down to one value and then looping through all the values in the matrix. And I'm taking advantage of that so I don't have to write a bunch of equations. So now I have U0, UCZE, USE, UCSE, USEV0. I can calculate UCVI, and that's defined as the square root U sub C VI, defined as the square root, which is the backslash button, the button right below the backspace on the keyboard. Or you can go to the calculator toolbar and hit square root. And that is u, the square root of u dot c z e squared plus u dot s c s e underscore v i to the second. And then now I can calculate u c v zero array i because it's because it's an array. So u dot c underscore v zero array i is defined as the square root of u dot c z e squared plus u dot c s e underscore v zero array i squared. And now when I show what that's equal to, you'll see that you get the uncertainty for it. So now I'm going to find do the final step and calculate u d which is the overall uncertainty of the DAC, and you get two separate ones. You're going to get UDVI, so U dot DVI is defined as the square root of U dot 0 to the second plus U dot C underscore I to the second. So that's the, that's the, uh, the design stage uncertainty for VI. Now I can do the design stage uncertainty for, D, for uh, V0. And again, remember, put the array i because you have nine different values. Is defined as the square root of u dot zero to the second plus u dot c underscore v zero array i to the second. And now I have the uncertainty for both u d v i and u d v zero for the DAC. So I can go ahead and show that so I see what the actual values are. So now I have the values of uncertainty for the voltage for the DAC. Now calculating the uncertainty for strain, I'm going to use the equation that I have the Excel tutorial as well as the tutorial itself on how to derive the equations. So I'm going to say u dot epsilon array i is defined as the square root of u dot vi divided by ud underscore vi 
divided by v dot i to the second plus <coughs> u dot d underscore v zero array i divided by v dot zero array i to the second plus u dot gf divided by gf to the second. Now, I didn't define u gauge factor yet. So if I go to the top, I can define u gauge factor. So u dot gauge factor, I'm going to say it's 0.02. You've got to calculate it. And now I can say u dot epsilon is equal to, and that gives the uncertainty of epsilon. And don't forget to add in front of it, multiplying by the value of epsilon itself. And then you got the uncertainty of epsilon. We need to define the uncertainty for base, mass, height, and LS. So defining the uncertainty of base, height, mass, and LS, we get the following. So we also got to define the base as well and the height as well. So the base is 0 0.025. My height was 0 0.01. And now the U of the base is defined as, let's say, 0 0.1 for her, the purposes of this tutorial. And then U of, the U of the height is defined as the same value as U of the base. And then, and then u dot ls, let's say, is 0 0.1 as well. And then let's say u dot m is equal to 1 gram per kilogram uncertainty. So now we define all the uncertainties here. We can calculate the uncertainty of uh, Young's modulus. So calculating the uncertainty of Young's modulus. And using the equation from the previous tutorial, we get u dot e array i is defined as e array i times the square root of u dot b divided by b squared plus 2 times u dot h divided by h squared plus u dot ls divided by divided by L dot S array I to the second plus U dot M divided by M array I to the second plus U dot epsilon array I divided by epsilon array I to the second. And keep in mind that when you do these uh, definitions, you got to make sure you keep the same cases. As you can see, it was giving you any error because it wasn't the same case. So then now u dot Young's modulus is equal to the following. Now these values are really high because I'm not using, again, I'm using hypothetical uncertainty values for the base, the height, the LS, the M, and the gauge factor. So keep that in mind when you're doing these calculations. you got to put in your own uncertainty values. You have to figure those out. So now that I have the uncertainty calculations completed for this, I can export that into a text file so I can open it in Excel and make a nice pretty graph. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say now exporting the results. One gets now exporting the results. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a, um, a variable data export. And I'm going to say, so I'm going to now export this data. So I'm going to first export the, the V0s that we calculated. And then I'll export the uncertainty of VI. Then I'll export the uncertainty of V0. And then I'll export the uncertainty of Epsilon. And then I'll export the uncertainty of Young's modulus. So I'm going to say data.ex, so data export, array i, comma 0, because the first is the rows, the second is the columns. 
So the first column is going to be defined as v.0 array i. So that's going to have the, all the arrays of v0 from which we calculated. Then I'm going to create a data export for the vi uncertainty. So I'm going to say 0, 1. And that's going to be for defined as u.dvi. Then I'm going to say data.ex array i comma 2. Defined as u dot d underscore v zero array i. Then data dot ex array i comma three. Defined as u dot epsilon array i. Then data dot ex array i comma four. Defined as u dot e array i. And now when I type data.ex equals, you'll see it compiled all of those uncertainty values together for you into one matrix. So now that we have that one matrix together, we can finally create the export file. And that export file is going to be defined as write. The function that we use that is called write print. Then you specify the location. For me, I'm just going to say data export.txt. Since this is in the same directory, I'll save that text file. And I'm going to define that as data.ex. So make sure you spell it right. It's called write print. So I add a little air there. And then now I can go to my desktop. And you can see that it opened the text file on the desktop. And now what I can do is go to Excel. And I can open that now. And now you can see that I have my data inputted. Now I can also create a new Excel file by hitting Control N. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can make the plus or minus dynamically in Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and also open uh, this other data one that I had. Hit Finish. Open a new Excel file. I'm going to copy the results. So this is my original data. Paste it into this one. And then my uncertainty data. And then I'll paste it here. And now what I'm going to do is this is V0. This is the uncertainty of V0. This is VI's uncertainty. This is the uncertainty of strain. This is the uncertainty of Young's modulus. So I'm going to say v0, strain, and Young's modulus. So what I'm going to do is there's a function called concentrate. It, what it does is it combines multiple um, strings of values together. And I'm going to insert the symbol for plus or minus in another cell, highlight it, and copy it. And then what I'm going to do is concentrate. the first set, which is this. Then I'm going to put a quotation, paste the plus or minus, comma, the uncertainty for that, and enter. And then if I drag that through, what it's doing now is I have successfully grouped the value of v0 for each measurement with the uncertainty of that v0. And I can do the same thing with strain. If I just move it over, and then I change the referencing to the top here, and there, and then <coughs> scroll through, it'll give you it. Now keep in mind the strain value is so small, so it may show up as zero in, in Excel unless you uh, expand it. And then I'm going to move this over one more time, and you can see it's referencing both the Young's modulus and the uncertainty of Young's modulus, and then I can drag it through. And now I have a table that has the uncertainty and the, mean, and the values actually measured with the uncertainty. So that's how you do that with MathCAD. Now there is another method to export the data, and that's to use the insert data 
file output and you enter the name of the file output so let's say data export one uh, txt or you can hit the browse button to tell it where it goes then you hit next and then you hit finish and now you specify the data that the variable to do and that's data.ex hit enter and now it created that same file exporting it so that's mathcad a method to do uncertainty analysis so in the next tutorial I will go over how to use MATLAB to do this and you can use similar methods to have a data import sheet so I'll use the same exact data input text file recreated to import into MATLAB and then I'll export in MATLAB as well and show you how you do the calculations in there and that is it so uh, we'll see you next time